every one of these cooling fans that's mechanically driven off the front of your engine is going to take some horsepower to spin. As they're moving air, they're gonna give you some parasitic drag. Which one, though, takes the most horsepower and which one takes the least? That's what we're gonna find out when we bolt them all up to our 350 small block Chevy engine. Now, every one of these fans is 18 inches in diameter. Every one of them has six blades, but there's different designs. There's an OE type clutch fan. There is a plastic flex fan. There's an aluminum low profile fan. And then there's the very old school steel fixed blade fan. There's gonna be one winner here and three absolute losers. We're gonna go find out which is which right now. Next up, we decided to go with the plastic flex fan because it has softer blades than the steel one, so we figure that it's probably gonna eat less power. The theory on these is as RPM increase and it's drawing more air, that these blades flatten out like this and therefore take less of a bite of the air and eat less horsepower. One thing you do need to pay attention to if you're installing a fan is making sure you're spinning it the right direction because there is such a thing as a reverse rotation fan if the belt arrangement on the front of the engine spins the water pump the wrong direction. Did you take the bolt? Okay, plastic flex fan, ready to rip. Okay, plastic flex fan, I'm almost wondering if it's gonna be better than the clutch. Never know. We just made 388.3 pound feet at 3,800 and the horsepower 325.1. Wow. At 5,100, that is pathetic. We just lost 18.6 pound feet of torque. Looking at the horsepower number, we just lost 23.9 horsepower from no fan to plastic flex fan. That plastic flex fan. You know, when you said 30, I junk. thought you were maybe crazy. No, but I think, I've seen this. Yeah. It's I, not I mean, my I, first barbecue. I, I've seen it too, but I just thought with the fan and all that, I mean, the shroud and everything in front of it, I couldn't see it taking, you know. Wow, that's that bad. Much. Okay, last one. We're gonna install what we assumed was going to be the worst fan, which is this factory type steel non-flexible fan. But I don't know, the plastic one could be worse. It's all about, look at the pitch of the blade. See how there's like a 90 degree cut on that blade, whereas this one's more shallow. So who knows what's gonna happen here. Okay, ready? Here we go. Oh, yeah. Truth. Well, this is all of our number one picks, so we'll have to see how smart we are or aren't. We all said this is the worst, right? Yeah. It will be. But then I was stunned by the plastic fan, <laughs> so I don't know. The plastic fan is pretty bad. This would be worse. Now you nailed it. 30 horsepower, gone. I actually read nearly all of the comments on all of our videos, and one of the things I saw pervasively is people want to know how much horsepower is killed by the accessory drive on the front of an engine, and specifically people asked about the water pump, and so that's what we're going to do here. We're going to start off with an electric water pump that has no parasitic loss to the engine whatsoever, and then we're going to start killing power. First, we're going to install a Wyand aluminum high-performance mechanical pump, and it's going to have a performance pulley ratio that spins the water pump more slowly in an attempt to save horsepower. We'll find out. And then we're going to go to a restrictor for the thermostat to see if there's a power difference if you do or don't have a thermostat restricting the water outlet on your engine. After that, we are going to go to the high flow water pump pulley ratio, which spins the water pump even faster. Then we're gonna put on an alternator and load that thing up and find out how much power it kills. And finally, we're gonna look at the power difference between coolant temperature that is low or way too hot, like 200 degrees. Torque, 468.2. No 
real change there. Give me the averages and we'll find out what it is, but it's definitely down a couple numbers. So as an average across four runs, it made 467.1 pound-feet of torque, 467.9 horsepower. That actually killed 3.7 horsepower. Oh, that's More than I thought. Yeah, that seems like a reasonable amount. I mean, it's not gonna be 20, it's not gonna be zero. Yeah, but Three, the question four is- Four horsepower or so, 3.7. Apply it to your life though. You won't feel it? No, there's absolutely no way. One more pull with this combo. So our average numbers with the more high cooling ratio, 463.5 pound-feet of torque, 465.9 horsepower. So once again, we're just a tiny bit down from the electric water pump until the fast drive ratio on the mechanical water pump, it's five horsepower That's with true. the restrictor. So a thermostat and a mechanical pump costs you five horsepower at this RPM versus an electric pump. But we have more stuff to put on. We have to go put the alternator on there. So the alternator ends up killing more power under a load than anything we've tested so far. It also turns the fastest compared to everything else we've done. Yeah, this is what I was thinking, is that the alternator, it's not like the water pump where the load increases as the RPM go up. Yeah, just... That draw on the alternator is there even at low RPM, and so it's killing roughly the same amount of power throughout the curve instead of the water pump, which only affects the very top. And again, it's not a huge amount, but it all adds up. Well, yeah, the difference between our first test and everything that we've added now, the restrictor, the alternator, the electrical load, the mechanical water pump, the pulleys, it's 11.8 horsepower overall and 6.5 pound-feet overall. Almost half of it came from the alternator alone, right? Yes. Wow. So what if you had even more load on the alternator, like an electric fan, electric water pump, and oh, everything it would powered right up? Definitely be more. Yeah. I mean, you can tell when you hook up a battery that has a big load and the engine idle speed slows down because the alternator is really grunting against it. Yeah. I think the alternator is a bigger difference than anything else. Everything that we did is going to contribute to better cooling, and having cool water temperature is way more important than any of this little itty bitty stuff we've been messing run with. Run to run, absolutely. We're gonna run it up to 200, which is what you'd see in a car, find out how much that kills. At this point, we can throw away the four run average and just do one dyno pull, because the coolant temperature is 200 degrees and that's gonna make a big difference. All throughout the episode, we were starting runs at 132 degrees, and uh, now, actually 206, 205, 204. Here we go. hideous was it, Steve? The one thing right? I guarantee is that this is the biggest change we've made. Yes. yes. This will be the biggest thing that's happened the entire episode. So torque 453.3, horsepower 449.7. So that's down 10. What we're going to do to pick up significant power is dumbfounding. Honestly, you're not even going to believe it. And once we're through with that, you're also gonna see a comparison of a stock type oil pan like this versus a performance aftermarket pan. It's gonna be pretty good. Let's talk a little bit about what we're gonna use as a test mule here. If you've watched Engine Masters for a while, then you saw this in the episode that was called 600 horsepower camshaft shootout. We compared a hydraulic roller cam to a solid. Well, it's exactly the same configuration. This is a big block Chevy. It's a 454. It makes 600 plus horsepower. 
power, it's a pump cast deal, it's actually really, really cool. But the good thing about it is that it's got a giant rotating assembly down there because it's a big block, it's got a four inch stroke, it's churning all sorts of trash through the oil all of the time, and that's gonna be a big deal. And it also runs to 6,500 RPM because of the nice little solid roller camshaft in it. So it's a good candidate to show you how controlling the oil in the crankcase is going to make power. First thing that we're going to do is install this turd, fill it up with AMSOIL, of course, and then we're gonna run it and show you how you can make power with oil for less than free. So our final answer is 577 pound-feet of torque at 4,100 RPM, and up top it made 614.6 .6 horsepower at 6,400. But let's have a look at what's going on with the oil pressure. Because we all suspect this is a little over full, and I'm gonna say yes. And I checked that this is exactly what the factory recommends for this level with this filter. And actually, I thought it was kind of interesting, but if you use a short filter, it actually takes 6.7 quarts with a short filter and seven quarts with a long one. So they're down to that kind of accuracy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's interesting. I, th I thought it was great. They're also not running 6,500 RPM from the factory. They're probably only running 5,000 RPM. Or less. <laughs> More or less. Yeah, with that fan originally on a one-ton truck. So you've seen this, right, Dulcet? Well, the thing is, that suggests a control problem, but this particular motor has a solid roller, which is not gonna be a affected as much as a hydraulic flat tappet or hydraulic roller. That's because a good point. There's no piston in there to lose compression and cost you lift and duration with the solid yep. roller. So let me tell you exactly what's going on with this curve right here. What we're seeing is that at high RPM above 5,000, the oil pressure is dropping off. And that means that there's probably too much oil in the pan, it's getting all whipped up. And Steve's talking about how that can affect a hydraulic roller camshaft. The, if there's a bunch of air in the oil, it's aerated from being whipped around, then that's why the pressure drops off. And if the pressure drops off, a hydraulic lifter is gonna start to fall Lose apart. Lose some squish. And yeah. So we're gonna go pull a quart out of this thing-ish and hope we can see that improve. Here we go, run it. pretty happy for just draining a quart of oil out. We actually made more power. Let's have a look. So let's overlay the full oil pan versus the one quart low. Okay, there you go. Kind of predictable on the RPM, I think. You know, down below 5,000, it really doesn't matter. But once it, the crank starts whipping that oil around, what'd we see there, like five horsepower at peak? It's the difference between 613.8 to 619.8. Oh, yeah. Six horsepower just from draining a quart of oil out of the stock pan. Oh! <laughs> So super interesting. Basically, we just ran the aftermarket pan with what we believe is way too much oil in it and look at the curves. The red line represents the stock pan with the reduced oil level in it and the black line shows that we killed 22 horsepower with too much oil in the aftermarket pans. I bet the audience has no idea that too much oil kills 20 horsepower. It's surprised a lot of people over the last 10 years yeah, or so when we started doing these tests. So the question really is, how much oil do we drain out of it? I think we do it a quarter at a time. Okay. I think we're gonna take three quarts out of it. I think this thing wants five in the pan and one in the filter. We picked up some power, but we're still losing oil pressure. Pull another quart out. I agree. Now we have six quarts in the pan. I'd still pull a quart out to see what happens. We have to. Yeah. All right, now we're down to five, which is the number I called. I so think you might be right, that's actually. That's the most important part of the episode. I know. It's me being right. right. Yes. <laughs> run yet. Thank you. you win. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> nice work, Freiburger.